Oh, there we go. That probably helped a little bit better. I bet you can hear me now. Ha! Had the mic muted. Anyhow, <clears throat> January 1st, 2012, The Information Nation. I'm your host, Ken, right here on Orion Talk Radio, oriontalkradio.com, theinformationnation.com. I hope everybody had a good holiday season. I know I did. <clears throat> I know we weren't on last week, Christmas, but uh, had some good programming on for you. Actually, Christmas was a lot of fun for my wife and I. We've got some friends of ours that own uh, Will, uh, Wind Hill Pancake Parlor in uh, McHenry, and they had a Feed the Troops Day. So we went over there and helped out, and they had the recruits from uh, Great Lakes Naval Station over there and got to sit around and uh, serve the troops, and they did some karaoke, and they borrowed everybody's cell phone and called home, and they had a good day. So along with the VFW and the uh, Polish Veterans Association and a myriad of other people put this whole thing together. So we had a day where the troops that couldn't be at home uh, had something to do. You know, they got to got to enjoy themselves a little bit and, and have a good time. It was great to see those young people. They had a ball. I shot two hours worth of video, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun because they, they spent about an hour at Ed uh, doing karaoke. And some of these guys... Uh, Got some pretty good voices. Others of them need to have a career in the military, but that's okay. If I was one of them, I'd be. I'd have a very long career in the military. But really nice people. Nice to see them uh, enjoying themselves for a change. And uh, well, things haven't uh, gotten a whole lot better, <clears throat> as you know. Uh, President Obama signed the National Defense Authorization Act. So welcome to the concentration camp of America. You are all now prisoners. Uh, you are under electronic surveillance. Uh, um, yeah, you guys on the CIA, FBI, Interpol, all the rest of you that are listening in, and be sure to listen, and you might learn something. Yeah, we understand how it goes. But um, written in a paper the other day, uh, the, this was posted at the Intel Hub, uh, two four-star generals write New York Times op-ed against NDAA and indefinite detention of Americans. This is back from, matter of fact, December 21st. Two four-star Marine generals have written a stunning op-ed in the New York Times, which demands that President Obama veto the National Defense Authorization Act, a bill that allows the government to use military to indefinitely detain American citizens without due process. Charles C. Krulak who used to be the Commandant of the Marine Corps, and Joseph P. Hoare, both four-star ge uh, Marine generals, published a piece on December 12th. The op-ed starts with a direct demand that President veto the NDAA bill in order to protect our country from a false choice between safety and ideals. It then goes into the most blatant anti-American treasonous provisions in history of the United States. One provision would authorize the military to indefinitely detain without charge People suspected of involvement with terrorism, including the United States citizens apprehended on American soil, due process would be a thing of the past. Some claim that this provision would merely codify existing practice. Current law empowers the military to detain people caught on the battlefield, but this provision would expand the battlefield to include the United States. On hand, Osama bin Laden and and, and hand Osama bin Laden an unearned victory, long after his well-earned demise. The generals then go on to cite facts that most of the military have not been asked for this extreme new power. Sadly, many at the Pentagon are openly planning to unleash military on American people, and if we do not see more high level of military personnel speak out against this and other tyrannical bills, America is finished as we know it. It's quite interesting. You have two Marine Corps generals. Well, if the generals feel that way, how do you think the troops feel? Do you think they're going to go and kick down the door of mommy and daddy's house and drag them off to a FEMA camp? It's um, <laughs> same old, same old. Nothing has changed. Obama, in his ultimate wisdom, ignored these two gentlemen and signed a damn bill anyhow, which... Uh, <clears throat> Like I said, welcome to the United States concentration camp. Do you have your papers? Do you have any of your papers? Send me your papers. I need to see your papers. It, um, it's not getting any better. But 
on the upside, gun sales are up quite a bit. You know, people have to start, um, matter of fact, the next article here, Obama signing statement. On, <laughs> now, this is, this is cute. Obama's signing statement on the NDAA, I have the power to detain Americans, but I won't. How many out there are buying that one? I bet you're all just jumping up and down saying, well, Obama said he won't detain Americans. Yeah. As Americans look upon the trees, a treacherous legislation passed under NDAA 2012, it should first be remembered that the very bill Obama threatened to veto was controversial due to the language that the Obama White House itself pressured Congress to add. That's according to Senator Carl Levin. Second, signing statements are not law and are not a constitutional power granted to the executive branch. By reassuring or troubling language within, it, it has no bind, it, it doesn't bind anything. All it does is, it, that, that's kind of like I want to feel safe. Okay, we'll spend $4 billion a year for the TSA to make you feel safe. You can have the imagine, you know, you can just sit back and close your eyes. Close your eyes and imagine how secure and how safe you are in this concentration camp we call America. And it's not getting any better. It's getting worse. You know that if you go to Washington right now, you go to Washington, D.C. right now and um, <clears throat> drive around there, the second you enter the city limits, they take a picture of the front of your car. So they have your license plate number. They run that through a database so they know who owns the car and everything else. And then at any time while you're in the D.C. area, all they have to do is type in your name, type in your license plate number, boom, the camera picks it up. They know exactly where you're at. Now, if that's not surveillance, I don't know what the hell is. But there's so many people out there that makes this makes them feel so safe. I want to be safe. Stick your hand down my pants, grab my fudgies, make me feel safe. Bunch of meatheads. You know, I don't really think they understand what they're getting themselves into with all of this stuff. You know, they want the American people to fire the first shot. That's not going to happen. It's going to take these clowns to do it. But the hell that's going to be unleashed when the American people finally do wake up to the point where they have just not going to take it anymore is going to be horrendous. They think they had problems over in the Middle East. They haven't seen nothing yet, baby. I mean, the clowns running around in, in Libya and um, what you call it, Egypt over there, these were not trained military personnel. These were just your regular little militant hotheads. But there are a lot of veterans out there. And there's a lot of active duty personnel out there that won't stand for this. But we're not going to fire the first shot. We're going to let you do it. Start dragging people off to FEMA camps and see what happens. We can't tolerate this anymore. We can't take it from our government anymore. Oh, excuse me, but I needed that. We've just got to sit back and watch these idiots do their thing. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I said about Ron Paul, you know, when they took down, um, what's his name, Herman Cain, and they started with the women and all the rest of it, and they took him out of, out of camp. I said they were steering this election. And then Gingrich floated to the top. And they start hacking away at Gingrich. And I said, you watch. They're going to go after Ron Paul. They'd probably call him a racist. And sure enough, what did they turn around and do? They call him a racist. Hey, and we were talking about Ron Paul when we left. Now that we're back, we'll talk about Ron Paul some more. I said on, on a previous show that they would go after Ron Paul. They would um, find something to complain about with Ron Paul. They, they'd call him a racist, and sure enough, they have. They, one woman from uh, Chicken Noodle News came out and said, uh, you know, 25 years ago, you, um, you wrote this letter, or supposedly wrote this letter, and uh, you know, you, you, you're a racist. No, he's not a racist. You know, Joe Joseph talked about it in the last show, how they go after Ron Paul, how they how they mistake his uh, non-interventionist viewpoint um, as being isolationist. And now because they want to get rid of him, they're going to start with this racist garbage. 
Let's look at the overall picture of Ron Paul and, and the rest of the candidates in this, in this entire election. They're steering this election to get the candidate that they want to run against Obama. Whether they want Obama out or they want four more years, it doesn't matter. They are steering this election. All you hear from the media is, well, Mitt Romney, you know, Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney. Give me a break. I know people that used to live in Massachusetts, they wouldn't vote for Mitt Romney if he was the only guy running. And then other people would, oh, you know, Newt, give a hoot, vote for Newt. Yeah, I'll vote for Newt, all right. I'll vote him off the island. And now if you look, they've got, what's his name, Santorum is, is coming up in the polls, and they're, they're scared about Santorum. And, you know, we're going to, they are steering this damn election just, this is becoming just short of stealing the election and just telling you to stay home and they'll vote for us. They're doing nothing but stealing this election. They are steering this election to get the candidate that they want to go up against Barack Obama. Whether he'd be an easy guy to beat or he'd be real hard for Obama to beat, it doesn't matter. The powers that be want this election run their way. And it's time for us to start with that and say enough is enough. Personally, I hope that in the uh, on Tuesday when they have the caucus in Iowa, I hope Ron Paul wins it by about 80 percent. Because then they're going to have to pay attention to the guy. Because the man is right. It's not a matter of being an isolationist. We are not isolationists. We are non-interventionists. That's what the founding fathers told us. They said, look, you want to do business with another country, you go right ahead and do it. But you stay out of their internal affairs. And we have meddled with internal affairs since the cows left the barn and walked out into the field, let alone when they came home. What do you think Iran and Iraq and uh, uh, we're starting with, with Iran now, but with Iraq, Libya, um, Egypt, we meddled in the internal affairs of companies where, countries where we had no business going. And now they're going to steer an election so they can get their guy in there to continue making them money while the rest of us can turn around and stick our thumb up our chocolate whiz wang and go, Gee, I wish I had a job. Do you think these people care? Earlier I read an article, quite interesting. I know he's everybody's favorite person to talk about, Michael Moore. I mean, Mr. Wonderful, Mr. I don't know, dancing at Columbine or whatever the hell he did there. And how he's for the people from Occupy Wall Street. You people that support Occupy Wall Street, you, uh, you know, number one, you were used. Number two, if you think Michael Moore gives a rat's behind, the only thing he found there was a photo op. Michael Moore has a $2 million, 10,000 square foot summer home in Michigan. In one of the most exclusive areas in Michigan. Do you think he cares about you? He's one of the one percenters. He went up to Wisconsin and screamed and hollered about how great the unions are and how he supports the unions. And yeah, the union should this and the union should that. And it came out that he's never used one union member on any of his films. Not one. But the union people, oh, yeah, Michael Moore, even, you know, even the leadership for these union people. Yeah, Michael Moore, he's behind us. You know, he's a great union supporter. If he was such a damn great union supporter, he should turn around and tell people, no, you cannot work on this film unless you have a union guard. Do you see the games that are being played? Back, back when I was, I first got out of the military and I got into the workforce, it was about the time that they started shipping a lot of jobs to Mexico and, and uh, different countries because the wages were so much cheaper. And the unions were screaming. You can't do that. You'll destroy the auto industry. You'll destroy manufacturing in this country. And then all of a sudden, the union shut the hell up. Think they got paid? I do. Now they turn around and go after companies that wanted to build a plant down in South Carolina, Boeing. Well, that's a non-union state. You can't build that plant down there. But they had no problem with Emolt building a plant over in China. And I've covered this before. But every, everybody's being paid off here. And the, the election is being steered. And that's what we should be worried about. Because if, the if these clowns have got the, got the power to steer these elections, 
then we just might as well all go to Washington, get down in the lowly toe position, stick our butt up in the air, and let them stick anything up your chimney that they want. But we just sit back and take it. You watch how this goes. It's, it, it's going to continue with this election. No matter who the front runner is, they're going to get slammed until they get their guy to the top. Then all of a sudden, the slamming is going to stop. And they're going to be telling you how great and wonderful this individual is. Like I said, Herman Cain, I was not, I'm not a Herman Cain supporter by a long stretch of the imagination. Even on drugs, I couldn't support this guy. But I don't like the fact that my elections are being steered by a bunch of megalomaniacs that have so much money, they couldn't spend it in 10 lifetimes. And they think that I'm some kind of a babbling idiot. And they think the same of you as an American. You know, it's come time where we've got to show these people who they are. When Obamacare came up, people protested. Man, they marched on Washington. They marched all over the country. There were gigantic rallies all over the United States. And you know what they did? They all stood at their little desk. They flipped you the middle finger and told you, we know what's best. And they passed it anyhow. And Obama signed it. And this is what you've got running your country. They did it with the NDAA. They're doing the, they don't care about you anymore. You are irrelevant. How does it make you feel? How does it make you feel to be irrelevant? To just sit back and know that you don't mean anything to these people. Cracker got it right. They tell us to go pound sand. Absolutely right, Cracker. They could care less about us. Go pound sand. And what are we going to do? we we'll sit back and take it? Uh-uh. Let's talk a little bit about how you can change things. Do you know that if you're in a local community, small town, and you can find 50 people, just 50 people in your town, you can swing any election and get anything done that you want to do because 50 votes will turn around and not elect a village president or a city councilman. Oh, we're not scared and we're not all alone. There's a whole bunch of people in the chat room there that are just following right along with us. And we're having so much fun tonight. This is Ken for the Information Nation on Orion Talk Radio. OrionTalkRadio.com, TheInformationNation.com. Yes, we are. And like I said, if you think they care about you, they don't. Oh, show you what kind of idiots they think we are. Justice Department, silent as holder, charges, criti- charges, charge it. Never mind, my mouth isn't working tonight. It's, it's New Year's Day. Just give me a break. Charges critics with racism. Attorney General Eric Holder accused his growing chorus of critics of racist motivations in a Sunday interview published in the New York Times. When reached by the Daily Caller Monday morning, the Department of Justice provided no evidence to support the Attorney General's claims. Holder said some unspecified faction that he refers to as the more extreme segment, that must be me, is driven to criticize both him and President Barack Obama due to the color of their skin. Holder did not appear to elaborate on who he considered to make up the more extreme segment. This is a way to get the president because of the way I can be identified with him, Holder said, according to the Times, both due to the nature of our relationship and, you know, the fact that we're both African-American. Well, Mr. Holder, number one, I don't care if you're pink. Number two, there is no such thing as an African-American because, therefore, the only people that would be true Americans would be African. So you don't even know your grammar, you stupid moron. So sit down, shut up, go to prison. I don't care. Number three, I don't care if you're a black, pink, purple. I don't care if you are Hispanic, of Hispanic origins, of German origin, of Polish origin. I don't care. You want to know what I want, Mr. Holder? I want you to be an American American. I want you to be a guy that will turn around and tell that idiot buddy of yours in the White House, no, we are not going to sell guns to the Mexican drug cartel and turn around and blame it on the American people. That 
is wrong, man. Don't you understand that stuff? That is just pure wrong. It's pure BS. You just turn around and you go, oh, well, you know, they don't like me because I'm black. The thing is, you know why you came out and said that, Mr. Holder? Because you have no defense for your actions. You are a criminal. You are criminally liable. You should be taken into court and tried for wrongful death of those um, border guards that were killed. You should have a wrongful death lawsuit put against you. You should be kicked out of office, not just asked to resign. I don't believe in this asked to, asked to resign stuff. No, they should kick your butt right the heck out of office. Because you do nothing. You do nothing for the American people but turn around and blame everybody but yourself. You tried something, and guess what? You didn't get away with it. Although, with all your buddies in Congress and your buddy in the White House, I don't see why you won't get away with it. Or is he going to throw you under the bus like he's done other people? Probably will. Then what are you going to say about him? Well, he don't like me because I'm, I'm a darker African-American than he is. You guys are morons. You think the American people are stupid? It's only that the American people have not gotten to the point of really getting ticked off. But it's coming. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? Hear the sound of those boots banging on the ground? That's the American people starting to stand up and starting to walk towards you saying, we've had enough. But yeah, let's blame, let's blame everything on racism. Oh, jeez. Where do we get these guys from? Where did Obama find this clown anyhow? Where do we find Obama? I know we found him here in Illinois and for crying out loud. You know, you want corrupt politicians, come to Illinois. We have a wealth of them. Either they're in public office or they're in jail. We just got another governor that's going to jail. You know, we ought to take up a collection and put the governor's wing on our, on our local federal penitentiary. Uh, call it the Illinois governor's wing. Because we, we tend to send more governors to prison after. I would not want to be the governor of Illinois because I don't want to spend time in jail. Oh, federal communications official, internet freedom threatened. The United States is unprepared for an international fight that is brewing over whether the Internet will remain free from government regulations or fall increasingly under the control of emerging global powers. Federal Communications Commissioner Robert McDowell warned Monday, the proponents of Internet freedom and prosperity have been asleep at the switch, Mr. McDonald, the lone Republican serving at the FCC, told the editors and reporters of the Washington Times. Or maybe I should say asleep at the router. I have been hacking on internet freedom since before I started doing this radio show. I did it on my blog. I've done it on Facebook. And people think I'm crazy. You are going to lose your internet. I'm telling you this. <laughs> Do you realize what that... Do you realize that every time you get somebody that shuts down Facebook, they shut down Twitter, they shut down your blogs and everything else, we have politicians in this country that are salivating. They are drooling so much. I mean, their arms are soaked with drool because, hey, we can shut the people up. Then we can do whatever we want. We can put people in airports and we can fondle their fudgies. We can blow smoke up their chimney and they'll take it because... They won't have any way to complain about it or talk to each other. These people are looking to shut down your ability to communicate with other people, your ability to listen to radio programs like this and others out there, because we scare the hell out of them. We have got these people so scared. We are not the... Th <laughs> They're threatened. They feel threatened. I've said it before. I'll say it again. The most paranoid people in the world reside in Washington, D.C., if two dogs get together on the corner and they're sniffing each other's behind, the Justice Department calls it a conspiracy, has them arrested, and put them in a FEMA camp. That's how paranoid they are. And the American people are just sitting back going, ooh, yeah, uh, I want to feel safe. Here, let me drop my drawers so you can stick your hand between my legs and fondle my fudgies. Oh, you want to take my grandmother in the back room and strip her down naked to see if she's a terrorist? Well, let me wheel her in there. People, come on. 
this is getting worse. It's getting worse and worse. They've got it. Now it's going into bus terminals, train terminals. There are going to be highway checkpoints. And this is all being reported. I won't say by the, let's not even call it alternative media. This is being reported by conservative media because your alternative media has been screaming and hollering about this crap for years. So the next time you go out and you're driving down the road and you see all these flashing lights and you're sitting in line waiting to be groped, just take off all your clothes, get out of the car naked and bend over and spread them and let them stick their head up your chocolate whiz wang to see if your poop stinks. Is this what you want for a country? You can't keep going like this. Now, here's a guy, and this was, um, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, GoshenNews.com. It's on my website. Middlebury Dairy Farmer sheriff st- uh, and Sheriff stand up to FDA. David Hosteller, a rural middle of rural Middlebury, distributes raw milk to people who buy into his herd of Jersey cows. Basically, what he's saying is all the people that are getting the milk own the cows. So these are owners who are drinking from cows that they own. The action has drawn the ire of the Food and Drug Administration, which wants to inspect this farm because it believes it is the source of a 2010 bacteria outbreak in Michigan. But Sheriff Brad Rogers has a message for the FDA, which is get a warrant. Get a warrant? What a novel concept. Do we have such a thing in this country anymore? Where they actually have to present their evidence to a judge and get a warrant? What's a warrant? I didn't think we needed them anymore. Well, the conflict between the local and federal authorities came to a head two weeks ago when Haas Settler was summoned to testify before a federal grand jury in Detroit. He declined to appear invoking his Fifth Amendment right. Fifth Amendment. We have that one? I thought that went out the window with the NDA. Sheriff Rogers also notified the Justice Department attorney that if the FDA agents tried to inspect Hussettler's farm without a signed warrant, they would be arrested on trespassing charges. This will be the last segment of the first hour. We will have a second hour, so don't run away after this is over. Believe me, I'll try to keep you entertained. As long as we have these people in office, we will be entertained. TSA screenings aren't just for airports anymore. Roving security teams increasingly visit train stations, subways, and other mass transit sites to deter terrorism. Critics say it's largely political theater. They go to Subway? I thought they went to Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, that's a police department. I'm sorry. I got it all confused. Okay, the TSA is eating better than our local police. This comes from Charleston, North Carolina. Actually, it comes from the L.A. Times, but the guy's reporting from Charleston, North Carolina. Rick Vitter was rushing to board an Amtrak train in Charlotte, North Carolina, on a recent Sunday afternoon when a canine officer suddenly blocked the way. Three federal air marshals with bulletproof vests and two officers trained to spot suspicious behavior watched closely as Seiko, a German shepherd, nosed Vetter's trousers for chemical traces of a bomb. Radiation detectors carried by the marshals scanned the 57-year-old lawyer for concealed nuclear materials. When Seiko indicated a scent, his handler, Julian, uh, whatever her name is, asked Vetter <laughs> whether he had pets at home in uh, Garner, North Carolina. Too much, Vetter replied. You can go ahead. So I guess that's it. Even if the dog reacts, you just tell me, yeah, I got a couple of dogs at home. Oh, okay, go ahead. The Transportation Security Administration isn't just in airports anymore. TSA teams are increasingly conducting searches and screenings at train stations, subways, ferry terminals, and other mass transit locations around the country. They're also doing it at football games, basketball games, all the rest of this stuff here. They just want to stick their hand in your pants. I guess the meaning of being grabbed by the short hairs by the government is no longer just a euphemism. Yep, they're just going to keep on grabbing you and grabbing you. I want to go through the woman's side, though. I don't want some guy fondling my fudgies. You give me that cute little cute little TSA agent over there. She can stick her hand down my pants. I guess unless you live in San Francisco. But even there, he'd probably look at those TSA agents and go, oh, God, no. I don't want to be fondled by him. But this is, 
do you see how it's expanding? Like Nazi Germany. And people say history doesn't repeat itself. Sure it does if you got the right politicians in there. People look at it and they say, well, the government, I want to feel safe. I don't mind feeling safe. I just don't want to be felt up. <laughs> oh, come on, people. Let's have some fun here. I think the next time you go into an airport or a, or a, a subway or a ferry terminal, a ferry terminal, okay, a train station, bus terminal, whatever the heck it is there, and they stick their hand between your legs, you just leave a permanent imprint of your knuckles on their forehead. That will remind them not to fondle your fudgies. Do you see how this is how this is going? It started with that piece of garbage that Bush put out called the Patriot Act. And I talked about this the week before Christmas when I told you about the Reichstag fire in Germany, how the Nazis burned their own building down, planted papers in there, and then Hitler went to um, whatever the heck that Bismarck or whoever the heck it was, Jelly Donut, I don't know the the leader of Germany and said, "Oh, we gotta, you know, we gotta take away some of these." Uh, rights of the people here to protect the people, make the people feel safe. And they took away the same damn rights that they're taking away from us in this country. The exact same rights. It's not a new game. It's an old game. It's just new players. But it's the same damn playbook. And here they are expanding. If you'll remember when Obama ran for president, I want a civilian force as well armed and as well financed as the military. What do you think the TSA is? The total sexual assault. There's nothing security about them. We spend about four to six billion dollars a year on these yabos. And they have not caught one terrorist doing anything. You know, they, they make a big deal out about, oh, they caught this guy over here, and now uh, you know he was gonna he was planning to blow up. You know who caught him? The FBI. It wasn't the TSA. The TSA couldn't find their butt with both hands if they were taped to their cheeks. But we're going to spend billions of dollars financing these people. So what can they do? So they can restrict the movement of the American people, and that's what they're doing. They're restricting the movement. A lot of people don't fly anymore. They're going to get it so you don't take trains, you don't take buses, you don't take ferries. You won't even be able to take your car because they ran a thing in uh, Tennessee where they had roadblocks set up. Yeah, land of, the, land of the free, home of the slave. They're the free and we're the slaves. But it's the same old tune. But there is a light. There's a very bright light at the end of the tunnel. And I don't mean it's the train. Because this was published today. American buy, Americans buy record number of guns for Christmas. American bought record numbers of guns last month amid an apparent surge in popularities for weapons as a Christmas present. Hey. I have to talk to my wife. I need a grenade launcher. According to the FBI, over 1.5 million background checks on customers were requested by gun dealers to the National Instant Criminal Background Check System in December. Nearly 500,000 of those were in the six days before Christmas. <clears throat> I think the people are starting to wake up. It was the highest number ever in a single month, surpassing the previous record set in November. On December 23rd alone, there were 102,222 background checks in one day, making it the second busiest single day for buying guns in history. The actual number of guns bought may have been even higher if individual customers took home more than one each. Explanations. <laughs> you'll love this. Explanation for America's surge in gun buying include that it is a response to the stalled economy with people fearing crime waves. Yeah, the criminals are in Washington. Another theory is that buyers are rushing to gun shops because they believe tighter firearm laws will be introduced in the future. The National Rifle Association said people are concerned about self-defense because police officer numbers are dwindling. No. It's easier to carry a gun than it is a cop. So people are buying guns. 
A spokesman said, I think there's an increase, increased realization that when something bad occurs, it's going to between, be between them and the criminal. Yeah, it's normally the way it works. Criminal breaks into the house, pump two in his chest, don't worry about it. Just call the morgue. Dave LaRue of Legendary Guns in Phoenix, Arizona, said Christmas sales were up 25% <laughs> on the previous year, and ammunition sales were also brisk. Well, yeah, guy. An empty gun is nothing more than a stick <laughs> or a rock. <laughs> you need something to put in the gun. He said there are a lot of people concerned about pending gun legislation and the sense about the current administration. <laughs> and the sense about the current administration. People think future availability will be limited, and there's a feeling of get it while you can. Record gu- uh, the record for gun sales in a single day was set in November on a day after on the day after Thanksgiving. I guess a lot of people were thankful when 129,166 background searches were carried out on customers buying weapons. Since the near fatal shooting of Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords by a deranged gunman. In Tucson, Arizona, last January, there have been increasing calls for tighter gun control. Miss Gifford survived being shot in the head with a semi-automatic handgun, and six other people were killed. Now, this this news comes from the Telegraph in the UK. I didn't see this sprawl across uh, the Tribune or Wall Street Journal or any of the rest of them, but I did happen to find this on the Telegraph. It's on the website. <laughs> so... People are starting to wake up. People are arming themselves. They think it's because of the criminals? I mean, I'll I'll go along with the fact that there are criminals out there. You know, they drive through a neighborhood and they shoot the place up and all the people are going, oh, my God, my kid was killed by by a stray bullet. You know, and they drove down the street and where were the police? The difference being is if every house on the street was armed and they knew that the possibility of driving down that street, their survival would be zero. Zero. Do you think that they'd be driving down that street shooting it up? Hell no. They'll go someplace where there are no guns. Because then they can be tough guys. We can be tough guys. We'll go out there and we'll shoot up the neighborhood. Sure you will. Try that down my block. Most of the people on my block are gun owners. A lot of them are lifetime members of the NRA. I'm not a big fan of the NRA, but that's besides the point. The whole thing is most of the people are gun owners. My wife and I are two of them. My next door neighbor, his wife. The neighbor two houses down from that. The neighbor across the street, the one down on the corner. Run the gauntlet. Wow! OrionTalkRadio.com, TheInformationNation.com. I'm glad everybody stuck around. Oh, are we having any fun yet? Of course we are. We're always having fun here. You know, we just got done talking about the record weapon sales during the Christmas holiday. I don't think it was to go out reindeer hunting. Then again, you never know. We got some weird people out there. But always one way to put food on the table. Representative Ron Paul says Defenseville assures dissent into totalitarianism. Now, here we go again. They're going to turn around. And once the main, the, the lamestream media gets a hold of this, they're going to turn around and make him look like some kind of whacked out ding dong. But GOP presidential candidate Ron Paul warned that the National Defense Authorization Act, which was passed by Congress this month, will accelerate the country's slip into tyranny and virtually assures our descent into, our descent into totalitarianism. The founders wanted to set a high bar for the government to overcome in order to deprive an individual of life or liberty. Paul, the libertarian congressman, said Monday in a weekly phone message to supporter, the lower the bar is to endanger everyone. When the bar is low enough to include political enemies, our descent into totalitarianism is virtually assured. The Patriot Act was bad as its violations against the Fourth Amendment was was just one step down a slippery slope. A recently passed National Defense Authorization Act continues to slip into tyranny, in fact, accelerates it significantly. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, apparently Ron Paul knows what the heck is going on. I don't know if he's a listener. He should be. I mean, maybe we'll send him a bumper sticker or something, send him a business card. The, even the congressman sees it. 
And there are other Congress people out there and senators that saw it, not very many, but there were enough that see the problem with what's going on in Washington. And like I said, they're going to turn around. They're going to they're going to they're going to stick it up. Representative Paul's chocolate whiz wang. Anyhow, oh, you can't get away from it. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. This was published on the Hill. It's on the website with a link to the full article. The the way these people are getting around, either getting around the Constitution, they're doing it all for your safety. You know, I'm surprised that they didn't turn around and arrest all these people that, you know, put in for Christmas guns. You know, they could be kicking down their doors and grabbing their kids and fondling their fudgies and locking them up. And, you know, <laughs> it's funny. I even saw the other day, I saw a video put out by MTV about the, the police kicking down some doors and taking away an entire family. And they were, it wasn't the police, it was the military. And they were throwing them in the back of trucks and everything. Even MTV is awake to this. If MTV is awake to this, that means that the young people are starting to wake up to this. But the ones that aren't awake to this are the so-called experts at PMS, NBC, Chicken Noodle News, Fox, ABC, NBC, CBS. Because they're feeding you the same crap day in and day out. But even MTV, MTV, if MTV got any more liberal, they'd make Obama look like a conservative and even they're awake to it. But it was a neat little video. <clears throat> I found it on uh, YouTube. And they, they had a family, and they were a nice little family, and uh, Daddy was sitting there reading, and, you know, typical family. Daddy's reading the newspaper, I think it was, or watching TV, and the kid was doing his homework, and his daughter was playing around at the dining room table, and Mommy was cleaning up the, cleaning up in the kitchen or something, and there's a knock at the door, and Daddy gets up, and he answers the door, and all of a sudden, here's these military people, and they grab him. Get your hands on your head! Get your head! Grab all the kids! Get your hands on your head! And they push him out the door and down the walkway and throw him in the back of a six-by, and Take them off to their FEMA camp. So even they're waking up to it. You know, and these politicians don't, don't take it. They, they have absolutely no clue. They think that they're in charge. They're only in charge as long as we allow them to be in charge. And that time is going to come to an end. On December 21st, 2012, when the world will end, because the Mayans said so. I'm real concerned about that, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm terrified. I want the TSA to go out into space and, and check around and look for meteors and comets and all kinds of space junk and everything. Because I want them to make me safe. I want to be safe. And, and zombies, I'm concerned about zombies. You know, zombies may come kicking in my door, and what do you do with a zombie? You shoot him twice in the head. Wants to kill him and wants to make sure. You know, is there anything else we can terrorize the people? Well, we've got a new strain of bird flu they were talking about. They were real concerned about that. Another way to get people to kowtow and take injections. Yeah, right. I don't take flu injections. I haven't taken a flu injection since I was forced to when I was in the military. They keep on asking me, oh, you want your flu shot? No, you can have it. Why don't you take it? You can have two of them. You could be twice as safe. But people are just... The politicians think we're the ones that are sleeping. We're awake and we're waiting. We're waiting for these clowns to do the act that we're with it, that's going to really... Tick the people off. You know, they, t they talked about the people in, uh, in Libya when they were rioting over there, which, by the way, we supported wholeheartedly. And uh, they were Taliban and uh, Al-Qaeda and the rest of it. We're fighting them in one country and, and backing them in another. And they think that, you know, that's democracy in action. Yes, it is. It's called mob rule. That's what democracy is. It's not a republic. There's no rule of law there. It's just you know, the law of the gun. And they thought it was so cool. And they were all backing these people. And 
they only think it's cool until we start, we get to their place and start dragging congressmen and senators out of their houses, kicking and screaming, and do like they do, execute them in the street. They have to understand, through the years, the, the serfs will only take so much, and eventually you'll have a serf uprising. Not smurf, serf. There's a difference. A smurf is a little blue fella. But eventually the people are going to have enough, and they're going to start throwing these people out of office. And in some cases, you know, in some countries, they're, going to, they're dragging them out of their offices and killing them. Now, this is where Ron Paul, we never would have gone into Libya with our so-called no-fly zone because tanks fly because that was none of our business. That was for Gaddafi to handle. But we went in there anyhow. And they thought that was so cool. Look at what the people are doing. The people weren't doing it. We were doing it. In um, Egypt, the people weren't doing it. We were doing it. Because we were supplying the weaponry. But, oh well. Let's get on to some really good news. Unrelenting global economic crisis, a doomsday view of 2012. (laughs) I'm sorry, I had to say that. The economic and political social outlook for 2012 is profoundly negative. The almost universal consensus among mainstream orthodox economists is pessimistic regarding the world economy. Although, even here, their predictions understate the scope and depth of the crisis. There are powerful reasons to believe that beginning in 2012, we are heading towards a steeper decline than what is experienced during the Great Recession of 2008 and 2009. I thought it wasn't a recession. Now it's the Great Recession? No, you don't know what a Great Recession is. Go back. Go back farther. You know, that was the Great Recession. This year was... Just a hiccup to when things are really going to get bad. With fewer resources, greater debt, and increasing popular resistance to shouldering the burden of saving the capitalist system, governments cannot bail out the system. And we have returned. I'm looking for that link for that MTV video because somebody in the chat room asked for it. Oh, I just can't. I'm rolling through so much stuff here because I searched so many videos and so many articles during the week that I can't seem to find it right now. But if I do, I'll post it in the chat room. Anyhow, we were talking about the doomsday view of 2012. Many of the major institutions and economic relations which were cause and consequence of world and regional capitalist expansion over the past three decades are in the process of disintegrating and disarray. The previous economic engines of global expansion, the U.S. and the European Union have exhausted their potentialities and are in open decline. The new centers for growth, China, Israel, Brazil, Russia, which for a short decade provided new impetus for world growth, have run their course and are deaccelerating rapidly and will continue to do so throughout the new year. Um... It's, it's amazing how they blame capitalism on it, and it's not capitalism. It's, it's not a capitalism problem. It's a political problem. Everything that is being done is political. It's politically motivated, and it is politically motivated for a few. It's not um, a system that is in decline. It is the fact that they, they need something to blame. So they're blaming the free enterprise system, the free market system, or the capitalist system, however they want to define whichever one they're looking at. But the problem being is it's not the system. It's the people out there that are manipulating it for whatever reason, whether it be personal gain or gain of power. More than likely, it's gain of power because these people got more money than they could spend in a thousand lifetimes. So what they want to do is they want to control the population. It already said in the Georgia Stone or whatever it is, they want to get the population down to 500 million worldwide from, what are we now, 7 billion? That's an awful lot of people to kill. But this is about power. Power, the the less affluent ones are looking for more money, but mostly they're looking for power so they can sit back and do their wonderful things. Let's talk about power for a minute. 
Uh, while President Obama arrived in Hawaii amidst security and fanfare, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi slips quietly into the Big Island Resort. Now, this was in the Hawaii Reporter. And it says here, news that President Barack Obama arrived in Hawaii this weekend to join his wife, Michelle, and daughters, Malia and Sasha, in a time for Christmas holiday has been covered by the news media worldwide. The first family and their friends have been enjoying a reclusive 17-day holiday vacation in the beach home in uh, Kailua, Oahu, or they're on Oahu, whatever. But another powerful pop, uh, politician is there for the holidays as well, albeit another island and with less media attention. Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, Democrat of California, who served as Speaker of the House is now, and is now the head of the House Minority, is once again spending her Christmas at the exotic Four Seasons Resort in Halalaya um, at historic uh, Kampu. Kampu She's in Hawaii also. Pelosi reported, reportedly plans to spend her Christmas Eve at midnight mass at St. Michael's Catholic Church in uh, Kalua, Kona. Pelosi spent the last two Christmas holidays in Kona at the same hotel in an elaborate suite that rents for $10,000 a night. The Four Seasons Resort details its luxurious settings and amenities on its website, gloriously revisit, uh, revitalized this natural tropical paradise offers more than ever to explore. With a newly expanded spa, beachfront dining, fashion boutiques, and a new deluxe suites, in addition to Jack Nicholas, Jack Nicholas's signature golf set on the Big Island's exclusive Kona Kohala Coast, the Showpiece Resort captures the essence of Hawaiian design, culture, and tradition. Now, I don't care that Nancy Pelosi is in Hawaii and she's spending ten thousand dollars a day or $10,000 a night at this resort because that $10,000 should be her money. If it's my money, I'm going to be a little bit ticked. But she's, her and her husband are, are mega millionaires. They're spending their own money. Who cares? Spend it any damn way you want. On the other hand, <clears throat> Mr. Obama and his wife and kitties and their entourage with all the security, are there for 17 days and they're spending $4 million. Now, Queen, Queen Michelle has, since they've been in office, spent over $11 million going on vacation. I guess Barack doesn't want her around, but that $11 million is our money. This $4 million is our money. Spend your own money, Barack. You know, I don't care if you want to go to Hawaii and spend it at Motel 6. You can rent the whole damn place out and probably spend less money there for two weeks than you're going to spend for your 17 or three weeks or five weeks than you're going to spend on this next 17-day holiday. But you people are running around on our dime. This is my tax dollar. Then you've got a problem with extending... Uh, the tax cuts or extending Medicare or extending Medicaid or giving people on Social Security increases or people that are on disability from veteran, from the veterans to give them. A, you, you got a hard time with that. You got a real hard time. Letting people. You know, taking care of the American people. You have no problem taking care of everybody else around the world. Oh, hey, we send Geithner over there. Ah, oh, Geithner, he's, uh, yeah, we're going to give him another uh, $480 billion. Let's give the people on Social Security a 5% raise. What? We can't afford that. We ain't got that kind of money. We're going broke, don't you know? Yeah. But uh, $4 million on vacation. Do you know how many of my listeners could go on vacation real nice if we took that money and just split it up between the listeners? $4 million. I mean, we could have a lot of people going on vacation instead of you and your wife and your two kids. This guy isn't a president. This guy's a freeloader. Let's look at what he's got. He lives in public housing. 
he, he, he goes around on public transportation with no cost to him, public housing with no cost to him. He's drawing a government paycheck, and he's pissed off about us? Wait a minute here. Something's wrong. Something is definitely wrong here. It's not us that you should be worried about, man. It's the fact that you spend seven, you spend four million dollars of our money. What could we do with four million dollars? What could you? What could an organization like? Oh, just let's. Um, any charitable organization, what could they do with $4 million? A hell of a lot more than you, your wife, and your two kitties, your entourage, and your security detail can do in 17 days on holiday. And what do you think they could do with $11 million? Instead, your wife goes on holiday. She's constantly on holiday, stays in the best places, drinks the best vodka. I've reported on this before. But these are our tax dollars that are being used. Actually, it's the American people that are being used. We're being screwed, blued, and tattooed. And I'm glad you stuck around. During the break, we are uh, talking to people in the chat room and said, you know, we could take that $4 million and split it amongst the people. Um, the 10 of us, you know, we could 400000 apiece. We could have a pretty nice vacation for that. If it was 100 people, it would be 40000 apiece. So let's take 100 families, give them each $40,000, and tell them you got to go on vacation. I think you could manage to take yourself, your wife, your kitties, probably take your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your aunt, your uncle, at $40,000. But let's go even farther. Let's say 1,000 people. 1,000 <clears throat> people, 4,000, 1,000 families, $4,000 each. Even at that, I think you could have a pretty darn nice vacation, at least for a week. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that don't spend $1,000 for a week. You know, they go to some little off-the-wall resort and, you know, they pay their money down and they may spend seven or $800 and, um, you know, just to go swimming in the pool and maybe take some nice walks in the woods or whatever. But $4 million? Or $11 million for Michelle? She goes without her husband? What in the heck is she doing with $11 million in vacations and leaving her old man at home? If it was me, I'd be pissed. Well, what the heck are you doing, woman? That's $11 million. Can I go with? But no, $4 million for the, for the family. Okay, let's figure this out. $11 million for Michelle. $4 million yeah, that would probably work out about right. A million dollars for Barack, a million dollars for Michelle, a million dollars for Sasha, and a million dollars for the other one. Yeah, I, I can see that. A million dollars each to go on vacation. Yeah, that sounds like a real party. And then they wonder why in the heck the American people are... Well, they don't care about the American people. Oh, okay. Hey, here's your future. This comes from The Guardian in the UK. China jails dissident Chen Ji for 10 years. The veteran dissident is the second to be convicted of inciting subversive, subversion through online essays within four days. Now, this guy is, he's a blogger. And it says here, a court in uh, Jing, yeah, boy, I wish these people, you know, Write it in English, for crying out loud. They tried Chen on charges linked to more than 30 political essays he published online. The Chinese court was handed down a 10-year jail sentence, the second dissident in four days to be convicted of inciting subversion through online essays. Another democracy campaigner, Chen Wei, was sentenced to nine years on December 23rd. The two men are not related. It is one of the heaviest sentences for inciting subversion uh, since the Nobel laureate Lou uh, Zebo was set, jailed for 11 years on Christmas Day of 2009, arrests and detentions are gathered <clears throat> have gathered pace this year as the Communist Party reacted to online calls for protests, those uh, like those that toppled dictators across the Middle East. The calls, however, have drawn little response, and no large-scale protests have taken place in China. The immediate People's Court in Jinjiang, in southwest China, <clears throat> region tried uh, Chen Zi, 57 on charges linked to more than 30 political essays he published online. 
judge said this was a major crime that had a maligned impact, uh, had a maligned impact. His wife, Zhang Quan Zhen, told Reuters by phone that after the trial, the judge said Chen was a repeat offender who deserved a long sentence, she added. Chen has insisted he's innocent, but didn't, will not appeal. The court ignored all the points raised by the defense lawyer at the trial, so what's the point in appealing? He was detained on uh, 29th of November after campaigning for independent candidates to win seats in upcoming elections to the local People's Congress. His family were given notice of the trial on Saturday. <clears throat> we're just falling right in line with Chinese, aren't we? Before you know it, you know, they'll be picking us all up. We'll be singing that song, they're coming to take me away, haha. But what do you think you got with the NDAA and the Patriot Act and the rest of it? It's just they haven't implemented it yet. Because see, the difference being is we are an armed population, they are not. Those people over there, they're gonna, what are they going to do? Like the guy that when they had that Tiananmen Square thing, he's going to stand in front of a tank with a flower? That's what they've got. They fight with flowers. In this country here, it's going to be a lot harder to do that stuff. But it's eventually going to come to that. Because you're going to write an essay or you're going to send an email to somebody and they're, they're checking all of this stuff and they're going to turn, it's going to be a radio station like this or, or Popeye or, or Joe Joseph or even Jimmy X, Radio X. And they're going to turn around and they're going to say, oh, 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 those people are dissidents. we got to lock them all up. We'll sentence them for 10 years. That'll shut them up. <sighs> like I said, welcome to the world's largest concentration. Well, the world's third largest concentration camp because you've got Russia and China and then us. South Carolina voter ID law rejected by the Justice Department. Now, this makes a lot of sense. I have to admit I agree with the Justice Department on this one because who would possibly want to show a, a picture ID in order to vote? <laughs> and that's what they're doing. Justice Department on Friday rejected South Carolina's law requiring voters to show photo identification at the polls, saying it makes it harder for minorities to cast ballots. No, it makes it harder for illegal, illegal aliens to cast ballots, for you Democratic asswipes, so you can fix more elections, so you can rig them all. It was the first voter ID law to be refused by the federal agency in nearly 20 years. The Obama administration said South Carolina's laws didn't meet the burden under the 1965 Voting Rights Act, which outlawed discriminatory practices preventing blacks from voting. Tens of thousands of minorities in South Carolina might not be able to cast ballot under South Carolina's law because they don't have the right photo ID, Assistant Attorney General Thomas Perez said. South Carolina law was passed by a Republican-controlled legislature and signed by GOP Governor Nikki Haley. The state's attorney general vowed to fight the federal agency in court. Nothing in this act stopped people from voting. Now, do you see what they're doing there here? I talked about this earlier in the show. They're trying to rig these damn elections. It doesn't stop anybody from voting. What's it say? you got to have a photo ID unless you're a black person. If you're a black person, you can't have your picture taken and put on your driver's license. But no, we're going to sit back and we're going to let crap like this float through all over the United States. And people are going to go, well, I don't understand how I lost my freedoms because I, I listened to the government and they made me safe. And now, now you look at it and what do they get? They, they will, you know, they will boo, boo, boo. Come on, people, wake up. This is the kind of garbage that's going on. When a government, a state government, tries to protect their own people, tries to protect their rights to vote, to make sure that you're having some kind of semblance of a legitimate vote, a legitimate election, and the federal government steps in and says, oh, well, you know, that's going to that's restrict the blacks from voting. Why? Why would this restrict blacks from voting? Don't they get driver's licenses? I know here in Illinois, if you don't have a driver's license because you don't drive, you can go right down to the Secretary of State and they will issue you a photo ID. So what's the problem? The problem is they'll get caught. It'll be harder for them to rig the damn elections. 
That's what's going on here. Nothing more, nothing less. They're trying to rig elections, and they're going to do it any way they possibly can. They're going to push this crap through. They're going to stop states like South Carolina from just, you know, you're going to go to vote. I go to vote, and I go up to my vote, my, the person there, and I say, hey, this is Ken. They go, oh, okay, where do you live? And I tell them my address, and they look through the thing. They don't know who the hell I am. I have no vote. Don't, I don't have to show an ID or anything else because this state here, the state of Illinois, is the most communist state in the union. And they're taking their lead from Illinois because that meathead we've got in the White House came from this state. He knows how to push things through in a criminal element that will turn around and take it away from the rest of the country. We sit back and we just want you know, people in this country just want to live their lives. They just want to sit back and enjoy their life. Let's look, what do you you got on this planet? 70 years, maybe? 75? Last 15 minutes of the show. Before I forget, I want to remind everybody, tomorrow night, 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Central Time, WTF. Tune in, there'll be a bunch of wackos there doing all sorts of strange and unusual stuff. You you guys at the FBI and the CIA and Interpol and the rest of it, be sure to tune in, you might learn something. If nothing, you'll get a good giggle. Anyhow, hysteria, the uh, cupcake-deemed national security threat. I kid you not, townhall.com, we're worried about cupcakes now. Traveling this Christmas, beware of the latest threat to your air travel well-being. Nay, threat to our national security. Cupcakes. Rebecca Haynes says she was going through the security at the airport in Las Vegas when a TSA agent pulled her aside and said the cupcake frosting was gel-like enough to constitute a security risk. She said she was able to pass through Logan International Airport security with two cupcakes, but she was stopped on the way back when she tried to return with one of them. That's the problem. She tried to return one. In general, cakes, pies are allowed on carry-on luggage. Wait a minute here. Why would you possibly allow it on carry-on luggage, but people can't take them on the airplane? Said the TSA spokesman, Jane Friend, adding they, they were looking into this cupcake, into why this cupcake was confiscated. <laughs> Okay, cupcakes. Yes, we are concerned about, aren't you, don't you feel safer that cupcakes can no longer go on an airplane? I'm not kidding you. Just go to my website, hit the link. It'll take you right to the article. I'm not kidding you. Cupcakes. Um, Well, there's surely a heightened security threat at this time of the year when the high volume of traffic In all facets of travel, attracts potential act of terrorism. Cupcake frosting does seem a little extreme. Common sense might suggest that a cupcake poses little, okay, no danger to civilians. But who knows? Perhaps the TSA was stopped, has stopped a dastardly Christmas cupcake bombing plot. If I'd have been that woman, I'd have looked at her and said, oh, I can't take it on? Well, wait a minute. I'm going to show you how I'm going to get this on the airplane. And I ate the damn thing right in front of them. Now, go ahead. Why don't you take me to the hospital and x-ray my butt? But cupcakes. Yeah, that's what we got running the TSA is a bunch of cupcakes, a bunch of moronic idiots. Oh, my God. Oh, what else have we got? I had one other one on here uh, that I thought you might really, really like. Oh, here we go. First sign of an ap- apocalyptic year to come. Thousands of birds fall to their death in Arkansas town for the second New Year's Eve in a row. Ancient Mayan legend says that in 2012 will be the end of the world. A small Arkansas town might have shown the first example of that as approximately 5,000 blackbirds dropped dead from the sky last night in the early hours of New Year. As if the incident was not strange enough, this is the second time in two years that the birds have fallen as the calendar year changes. This is on the Daily Mail out of the UK. It's on my website. I think it's flying under the influence. These birds all get together. They go out drinking. They go out partying on New Year's Eve. They have a couple, one or two too many. They get up there. They run into each other. They forget how to fly. They crash. Or harp. Thank you, Cracker. Yeah, it's harp. (laughs) Ah, Between the birds and the fish and the bees and the butterflies and the cupcakes, (laughs) the world is coming to an end. 
Oh, my God. And let's see what else we have. We have a couple other short giggly articles here. SOPA opponents may go nuclear and another 2012 prediction. The Internet's most popular destinations include eBay, Google, Facebook, Twitter, seem to view Hollywood-backed copyright legislation as an ex existential threat. Ex existential threat. It was Google co-founder Sergey Brin who warned that the Stop Online Priv uh, Piracy Act and the Protect IP Act would put us on par with the most oppressive nations in the world. Craigslist founder Craig Newark, Newmark, Twitter co-founders Jack Dorsey and Briz Stone, and LinkedIn co-founder Reid Hoffman argue that the bill gives feds unacceptable power to censor the web. Gee, that's just what we said about the Chinese. Too much power. Personally, I think we ought to go back to the cupcakes. I like cupcakes. Some cupcakes, some of the frosting is just way too sweet. Those I could see them confiscating. But regular cupcakes? The TSA, they need their cupcakes. Joe, I think chemtrails are connected to cupcakes. That's one of the people in the chat room. We're having fun here tonight. What else we got here? Uh, this is uh, <clears throat> this is from the uh, the Sun in the UK. It's kind of depressing. I was shot five times by the Taliban and ended up in a hostel where thieves stole my medals, says Mark, 37, former sergeant who served in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Northern Ireland. Thousands of Britain's war heroes are living on the streets after being shamefully abandoned by the country they served. A Sun investigation has revealed. Shockingly, we found. An army of homeless men, including soldiers just back from Afghanistan, now reduced to living in sheds by railway lines and even using their survival skills in the woods. Many have struggled to adapt to civilian life after their traumatic experience on the front line. Our investigation comes after we revealed the national scandal of up to 8,000 Ministry of Defense homes lying empty at a cost of 54 million pounds a year. Up to a third of Britain's homeless battling to survive the bitter winter nights may be ex-service personnel. Many have fallen through the cracks of the welfare system. They include Mark, a brilliant household cavalry man medically discharged last year after being shot five times by the Taliban in Afghanistan. He struggled to get help for his post-traumatic stress and ended up in a homeless hostel where thieves stole his bravery medals to sell for scrap. You know, it's not just England. We had the same darn thing going on over here. Government has no respect for the veterans and a lot of people out there that try to help veterans. I know down in Florida, if you find somebody that's homeless in one area down in Florida and you give them something to eat, you can be arrested for helping someone who's homeless. Now, what if, you, what if it's a homeless vet? What if, what if it's a vet comes back and he's homeless, he has nowhere to go, and you give him a sandwich? You can go to jail. This is the stupidity that's running around this country. And... Between feeding the homeless, housing the homeless, helping our veterans, and cupcakes. And I'm going to stay on this cupcake thing because it just tickles my fancy. It's, it's about as dumb as dumb gets. But we can send billions of dollars. We're going to bail out Europe. I don't care what anybody says. The, you know, the United States is going to end up bailing out Europe again. And the hell with our people. The hell with the Americans. Guys can go and fight for their country, supposedly fight for their country in a war. You know, we had to really worry about 9-11. We should have if it was, if it went down the way it was, they said it did, but it didn't. But we have, we have a lot of people in this country that need help. And what if we, what, if, what has this government done? They send Michelle Obama on vacation for $11 million and the Obama family for a 17-day vacation for $4 million. And we send Timothy Geithner to Europe so we can bail out Europe. <clears throat> Is there anything else that they want to do? Is there anything else that they want to do to the American people? 
The American people are the most generous people in the world. Let me tell you something. If it weren't for the American people, things would be a lot worse than they are. But the American people give to homeless shelters. They give to food pantries. They give to uh, Salvation Army, uh, Red Cross, whatever the, uh, you know, their local VFW, their local VA, and they're helping. But if it wasn't for the American people, do you think this government gives a rat's behind about the, about, about the homeless people, about their own citizens? No, they are too busy gallivanting around the world, playing king and queen and power brokers and all the rest of this crap. And in the meantime, the American people can go, just go scratch. You people that are on Medicare and Medicaid, you retired people out there, I've told you this before, I'll tell it to you again. In two years' time, your Medicare is going to more than double your monthly Medicare payment. It's going to go up to about $250 a month. That is fact. That is right in the Obamacare legislation. And they've been stealing money out of Obamacare, too. They've already took $51 billion to use it on other programs. Let's face it, people. We cannot, we cannot give these people any more money. 